All right, here we go. Um, a topic that's a bit of a hand grenade. Oh boy. Let's see if we can get through it without uh, <laughs> without upsetting somebody on the yes. internet. <laughs> this one was a, a recommendation, the topic in general, just to see what do what's the vibe from affiliate owners on something which is a not a taboo subject, but a bit um, you know, there's a there's a couple spikes it's complicated. on it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's complicated. complicated. It's complicated. And that is basically <laughs> <laughs> romance in the gym or any sort of relationships for lack of a better word primarily when we started this conversation between the training staff you know the coaches and the members and mm -hmm. is it just a hard no is there a policy in place because i don't know maybe you're opening a gym and you want to know should you have something in your trainer agreement or uh, you've had an interesting story. And so we're going to, we've done a bit of a poll from the community, if you will. Some of whom said, great. Well, I should say most said, do not use my name. I'm happy to tell you my two cents on this, but please remain anonymous to protect the innocent. And we will respect that. And a couple of people were like, yeah, use my name. I don't care. So, it's, uh, <laughs> so we've got the whole gamut. Yeah. Yep. So I, you know, this is going to be an interesting one. Because, you know, CrossFit gyms are, are interesting places. I mean, CrossFitters in general, you might have, you know, if you just surf Instagram for CrossFitters, it seems like most of them have an aversion to clothing, you know, and they've got mm, some... Yeah, cotton, the old cotton allergy. <laughs> yes, exactly. They've got some newfound confidence in their bodies, you know, and they're just, there's a yep. cleaned up the diet. There's just a flood of hormones taking over your body. You feel yep. magical and alive and... And sometimes Endorphins at the end of the workout, just uh, just running rampant, you know, yep. spring is in the air. <laughs> it was, what's interesting is, uh, you know, well, first of all, Boz, you can't stop love. You know, I dare you to try. No, no, not at all. No, nope. can't, but can't do it. If we're shouldn't talking, be done. I would, I would take it a step further and say it shouldn't, shouldn't be, done, be done, Pat. Shouldn't even try. <laughs> How dare you? What's interesting <laughs> is there's obviously it's delicate, delicate because, hey, if things go great. And we're talking about, hey, come on over to the house. It's been seven years. We're married. Have you met our new child? Hey, I mean, that's just phenomenal. More but power to you. More power to you. And if you are happily married or in some committed relationship, chances are before you found that person, you did a tremendous amount of dating, right? So mathematically speaking, the person that you're about to date probably is not the one that you're going to wind up with long term just 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 from sheer mathematically speaking it might be dating advice with pat it might be and i hope that it is but um there's a really good chance that it might not last forever and so if it does are you willing to now um you know stand around in the environment that you've created you know yeah. and that's and yeah, that's that I think so that's that's a big part of it for sure. And it is interesting because I talked to a few people and there were absolutely some success stories coming yep. out of these scenarios. Hey, we have some coaches, they met at the gym, they're married, they have a kid, life is great, and they're totally happy. Um, but that is not 100% of the cases that, uh, that I talked about either. So yes, it's going to run the gamut. And um, it's also interesting, you know, people's approaches to this uh, run the gamut from kind of like more codified to more loose, more kind of like, I know it when I see it, I know what the line is when I see it, uh, all the way to, you know, yeah, we have something in writing. So. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with, so what I did initially is I got a list of the 100 most uh, active gyms on BTWB and by active, just like number of member posting, social interaction, that whole sort of thing. And I sent an email to those 100 gyms about this topic and said, of course, if you're willing to give me your two cents, great. If not, no harm, no foul. Let me know if you would rather remain anonymous. And the responses I got back were fascinating. And most of them were the please remain anonymous. So I'll give you the, the short recap of, of this first one. And it's, it paints a good picture for almost what I would say is rather typical, but I do have some other um, examples to give after this. So this was from somebody who owns a gym overseas. <clears throat> it says they've been doing this for about 10 years. So they've got a lot of experience, have seen a lot of, uh, seen a lot of things in their tenure, if you will. 
I don't even know where to start with this. And they said it's a massive <laughs> minefield. <laughs> They've always had the policy that sleeping with members was a bad idea. And there have certainly been some horror stories from local gyms, even, you know, box owners sleeping with members, some of them being in relationships. It costs people friends. It costs family stress. It costs some people their business. Now, you know, I do know some examples where it worked out for the better. And he goes, oh, this person said, I know of one example where it worked out for the better. And that's about oh, it. Just one. Just wow. one. He says, it's not good uh, odds. This, no, this is, these, they feels pretty lucky that this individual's coaches have been pretty good people. They're a little bit older. And so they're not quite as likely to play the fool, at least so far, and that he's had his uh, affiliate open. He says, I do have to point out uh, that while trying to date the members is, you know, not a good idea. My policy is that it's a bad idea. But I do tell them that if they feel like there's something, actually something there, more than just a few weeks of fun, okay, you know, I won't get in the way. And he says, to be fair, I did break my own rule once, and it did lead to a relationship, as I felt there was more there than just a quick hookup. And I'm currently in a four-year relationship with that same person. So, so is this the same person that said they've only seen one success, and the success was them? Maybe is it was that... them. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's one other. But that's, uh, but that's, wow, I guess, okay. I guess, in their experience, they've got more tales of woe than tales of it <laughs> of it going well. But no, yeah. but no hardcore policy in place. No hardcore written policy. Just kind of, hey, here's my two cents on the matter. Yeah, one one owner that I talked to was similar in the sense that there was no hard policy, but there were some hard conversations that would come up once things were pretty clear that they were developing. And so, you know, the the story was, okay, I don't have something in writing for my coaches. This is not something that we're going to sit down and talk about you know, during an interview or a hiring process or, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. But once I'm aware that there is something going on, I'm going to sit that coach down and I'm going to ask them the question, is this worth your job? And the question that makes it was, real. Yeah, was to frame it around the fact that as a business owner, um, I am going to side with the client. If this goes sideways and there is animosity between the two parties, I'm going to, as a business owner, protect the client that is coming in and I'm going to take their side and it's going to be your exit that, that right. is going to have to happen after this. So it's not me making the decision or this person making the decision in that scenario uh, as the owner. It is just putting the cards on the table early and saying, hey, look, if this is for real and you think that this is something you want to pursue or you need to pursue, you know, it's it's serious, have at it. By all means, go for it. But understand the consequences up front and make your decision accordingly. And if this is something that, you know, you think might, eh, maybe it's just more of a more of a, a summer thing and maybe this isn't that permanent, well, you have to weigh that option against your potential future employment. So I thought that was an interesting approach. You know, and if you ask somebody early enough in any relationship, they're pretty darn sure it's going to go well. The, 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 yes, and that, the, yeah, that's, uh, the weather that is forecast something that, is usually sunny initially. <laughs> that is definitely something that came out from that same owner was 10 out of 10 times when things are uh, off to a great start. It's, oh yeah, there should be no problem. I don't see this as being an issue. And then later down the road, if it does go sour and it is tumultuous uh, or there is animosity that's lingering and the coach, uh, I'm sorry, the owner does side with the client, the coach still often comes back and says, what's the deal? Even though it was laid out to mm -hmm. them up front. So, you know, seems like that can still be uh, some heartache. I sp spoke with another uh, gym owner. A female gym owner from Florida. That's as specific as she, you know, wanted me to get. So, a female gym owner from Florida uh, has had a couple locations and basically said that this topic caused her first location to basically implode upon itself, and oh, wow. it was because they had uh, a trainer who was in a long-term committed relationship with a member. They'd both been there forever and been there for, mm -hmm. for quite some time. And I believe they're even uh, living together. So, but they're dating. Then there was another couple that worked out there as well. They were a married couple. So you've got a dating couple, married couple, only one, uh, just the gentleman is a trainer. Everyone else is a, is a, is a client. 
And long story short, the male trainer took some sort of an interest in the married female client. So, uh, you know, that, that started to occur. And of course, you know, no plan survives contact with the enemy, you know, then, you know, <laughs> the, that something eventually, you know, or, you know, two people can keep a secret if one of them's dead, you know, and, and that eventually somebody says something to something, it all came out as it usually does. It all came sure. out. And then when it, time. And then time. when it did, it just caused, as you could imagine, a massive fracture. People chose sides. You know, there was this big mm -hmm. just uh, void in the gym that was, I guess, uh, as one could imagine, really, really disruptive and just hurtful. Uh, since then, that was, I guess, many years ago. Uh, since then, they've changed locations. People have this been a bit of a turnover. And there has not been an incident like that since. So years have gone mm. by and everything's been totally good to go. So maybe it was just the wrong people at the wrong phases of their lives, all crossing sure. crossing, uh, crossing paths at the 5 p.m. class. I don't know, but it was definitely a, um, a story of it didn't just affect a couple people. Like there was a ripple that yeah. the entire gym suffered from. But, but even after, here's the interesting thing. Even after that happened, there was no policy in place. <laughs> so it's not, so it's not like a policy uh, was implemented after that. It was it was still continued just to be the whole like, kind of like you said, use know your when best you judgment, it. be an yep. adult, uh, know what you're getting into. If it goes sideways, you're going to have to deal with the consequences. And but like I said, years have gone by and they've been good to go. So so uh, you know, I guess I guess it's working. Well, I'd like to think that, you know, people are going to learn from their past experiences to some degree. So hopefully that happened. And hopefully, you know, as you say, kind of move past that stage of life and, and you learn that lesson the hard way and you see the potential havoc that it can create. And, you know, even if you don't have something written down, you can kind of uh, hopefully navigate that better in the future. And along those same lines, I talked to somebody who, um, again, you know, didn't want to be named and they took a more kind of paternal approach to this. Uh, just kind of in the sense where, same deal, no policy that was hard. However, they have the conversation with their coaching staff um, that basically amounts to don't defecate where you eat. Right. And it's just that simple. Right. They say, hey, look, you know, and, and it's done in the way uh, that's basically learned from my experience. I, I have done this in the past. It hasn't worked out well for me. I wouldn't recommend it. It's not worth it. There's plenty of fish in the sea at other places. I know this is a great place. I know there's a lot of great people here. Right. However, trust me, unless it's absolutely certain that this is it, this is the one, don't do it. And that's mm -hmm. the message from uh, that particular owner. So yeah, very simple. Simple advice uh, gained the hard way. <laughs> yeah. I've got two more and both of okay. whom were okay with me saying their names. Great. How many more do you have? I've got one. Uh, okay, okay. And I, let me go. I'll go one, then you can go. Okay, sounds and, good. And also, I hope, I hope for everyone at home that we're doing our best to to cover this in a non Jerry Springer fashion because it could <laughs> certainly it could certainly spiral into a into a daytime talk show deal. But okay, the next one is from just short and sweet. I was on the phone with uh, Nicole Christensen from CrossFit Roots, and I, I mentioned this mm -hmm. to her. Fantastic. She's like, yeah, I don't care. Use my name. Go ahead. And uh, <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> yeah, and we had her on previously. If you haven't watched that episode, definitely do. It's about making great trainers, and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And she said that they do have a policy, and it's actually in writing, um, which with all of her systems, I'm not shocked by that in any way, shape, or form. But what I got a kick out of was, at least what she told me over the phone, Although it was in writing, it seemed like there was a bit of wiggle room and interpretation to it because the <laughs> policy basically stated um, that habitually sleeping with members was prohibited. I loved the phrase habitually, you know, like, ah, you know, there's there's a little bit open to the interpretation there. So maybe she's given, you know, some people the the chance to be adults. But like, look, if something doesn't go well or yours now turning into a serial, whatever it happens to be, we can't have that. That's that's not yep. good for anybody. I'm sorry, this isn't going to work out. So that was yep. just short, sweet and simple. But she's also said, even as potentially vague as that policy is, and her gym's been around for quite some time, 
they have yeah. had no issues with this wow. since they opened. So eh, that's and, and impressive. It, it is impressive. And now as I say that, again, if you haven't watched that episode, you need to go back and watch it. And yeah. then you just have to ask yourself, have they not had any issues because of this loose policy? Or is it because of just the culture from day one that she's probably implemented sure. there? And you see the standard and how people interact and the level of professionalism. And you're probably like, okay, this isn't a biker bar. You know, I'm going to go ahead and this is a, a professional place of strength and conditioning. We're going to we're going to roll like that. So it, it could be a bit more nuanced than just the simple phrase in the policy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think all things are ultimately going to come down to that sort of thing, that cultural impact of that microcosm of people that are, you know, interacting together. I think that's that's always going to be a, a huge factor. Uh, but I'm interested that you use the word serial because the, this last person I talked to, that they similarly had a policy that was loose, but still there. And it was uh, that serial dating and or drama that results from it will not be tolerated. Oh, okay. And so that's kind of the hard line. It's like, look, all right, nobody's trying to thwart your, uh, you know, the love of your life. Nobody is trying to shut down a, you know, possibly life altering Mm -hmm. meeting. Um, however, if it's something that's happening routinely, if it's something that's creating drama and in some sort of, uh, you know, uncomfortable nature or unpleasantness with the members, then that's an immediate no go. Mm -hmm. So that's the hard line for this person. And th the same person also said that in their experience, which I don't know how much that maps over to other facilities or other coaches, but this particular owner said that what they've found to be way more common in their gym is not coach to member type of relationships, but staff to staff. They've had that way more- That I did more... not expect to hear. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't either. And this is admittedly a bigger gym. They have more coaches. They have more kind of auxiliary programs. So I think the pool of people that are working there is a little bit bigger, but- that surprised me a little bit. So, you know, the most of what's happening there is coworkers that inevitably spend a lot of time together, get friendly, and then maybe something beyond. Did that, did that owner say, because it seems like if I could make some sweeping generalizations, which is one of my strong points, <laughs> you know, it seems like most of the time under most circumstances, there's more bad stories than good of training staff yeah. to members. Did this owner say whether or not when it's training staff to training staff, was there as much fallout and drama or did it seem to be kind of swept under and everyone just went on with business and it's like, ah, eh, well, that didn't work out. Mostly positive. This, oh, this wow. particular okay. person, yeah, they've had uh, some success stories. I can't remember the exact number, but yes, there's been more successes than failures, but Obviously, when things go wrong, it does complicate things because now you have, again, the right. scheduling issue if people can't be, you know, in the same meetings together, et cetera. And decisions, hard decisions have to start being made about who's sticking around and who is not. But yeah, yeah. Thankfully, okay. <clears throat> that, that person reported that so far, you know, so good. Good. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. The, the next one I had also was cool with using their name that was chase ingram oh the man yep cross big d in dallas texas yep and chase is like yep cool use my name he's like look we've got no hard and fast rule okay uh he tells people to be adults and he gives his opinion which is that he's against it and thinks that it usually ends badly He's like, that's my opinion. It's, it's but the he, don't defecate where you eat speech. Right. That's like <laughs> and he, he also tells people that he expects them to be grownups, meaning that you need to act responsibly and accordingly, whether it goes well or whether it goes poorly, that you are responsible yeah. for your actions and how you conduct yourself. And you should be ready to accept the good or accept the bad. And I was like, okay, fair enough. He says he's got plenty of bad stories to include some divorces he's like but oh, the wow. other side of it he's like maybe i just wasn't seeing the other side he goes because he was at a wedding uh somewhat recently 
And I don't know if it was another member or a coach, but somebody kind of gave him the elbow and was like, hey, look, it, they actually talked about this. Like, you know that policy you got at your gym? It was always a bad idea. And Chase is like, yeah. He said, and this individual pointed around the wedding and they identified about eight couples that were at the mm. wedding who were previous members or coaches or a mixture of both who are all now currently married. Wow. So there you go. Yeah. Right. So that was a, I mean, so he said he even had to take a step back and was like, wow, that's actually not too bad. That's a lot of really good endings right there. So yeah. again, a mixed bag. You know, there are some really wonderful sunshine things out there. And then sadly, some ones that, that, that fracture. And I wish I could nail down with a bit more clarity. You know, if you could identify what was going to be the characteristic as to whether it went one way or another, I guess I'd be a, a millionaire because <laughs> I'd, I'd bottle that. Uh, I will. I don't think I told you this. So I sent out that, you know, I just got the list of the top 100 emails on, you know, BTWB and, and sent, you know, kind of yeah. a mass email. You know, I didn't like send each one individually, gave it a general intro or whatnot. And I just knew there'd be a sprinkling of some from all around the world. <laughs> I got an amazing response from one, from one person who was like, I hope to God this is not happening. We're a high school affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's man. the best response I've ever had. Uh, I just wrote back, Roger that. I hope it's not either. I'm going to go ahead and just sorry. Oh, sorry for any confusion. Well, that segues nicely into kind of some closing thoughts that didn't okay. really fit in uh, that I kind of uh, gleaned from talking to a few people. Um, number one, it seemed like everybody that I talked to, it was they were pretty emphatic that it's an inevitability that this is going to happen. You have a bunch of people in a room together, spending time together, you know, oftentimes outside of work, mm -hmm. this is the most time a group of people will interact with one another on a regular basis. You think about, right. you know, you go, you're a 6 a.m. warrior and you're there three to five times a week over the course of a couple of years. It's like, yeah, you get pretty friendly with people. Um, so it makes sense. So, you know, that, that was a common theme was like, Hey, it's going to happen. So you can't put your head in the sand and, and just hope that it's not you, mm -hmm. um, not, not going to happen. So that's something to think about. And then the, uh, the second thing around that was, uh, you know, when it does happen, there were a few people that said, as far as my part in it, I don't need to know specifics. I don't want to know specifics in the same way that I want to keep a professional distance between my clients generally, I, I'm not interested in, you know, the romantic inclinations of everybody. Right, sure. Only in so far as it doesn't become problematic. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're only interested in knowing just on the cursory level, like, okay, fine, noted. That's it. I'm not getting involved further. Only as much as, you know, I can keep an eye on things from that 20,000 foot view. And if you become aware of any sort of, you know, discontent or animosity, bad feelings, whatever. Well, then you've got to step in, you got some decisions to make. So that, that was kind of interesting. It's going to happen. I don't want to know about it, except for enough information to act when and if it's needed. Yes, fair. And that's, that rings very true too. I've got just a quick little blurb of um, a recap, if you will, of all the, okay. the responses yeah. that I got, just the, the general things from every different person that I talked to, if I had to just put them together, I would say, overwhelmingly, most people do not have a policy in place, like an actual written policy. Yep. And most of it's just word of mouth conversations. Most agree that things usually <laughs> went poorly more frequently than they went well. Everyone's kind of was in the camp of telling people to use common sense, be, a, be adults, identify if you can the difference between love or lust. And mm. you actually, if you do think it's love, who am I to stand in the way of it? If you truly think there's something meaningful here, go after it. If you think you're just flying high for the moment, mm -mm, let, let's not go down that path. It's not going to be well. And if you do go down the path, you know, thinking that there's really something there, got to do it with your eyes wide open as to what it yep. may cost if it does go south. Like you said, are you willing to lose your job about this? Are you willing to fracture friendships and all that stuff? And if so, again, just have your eyes wide open. Uh, let's see. So yeah, in general, frowned upon. So that was that was the, the rough, <laughs> the rough encapsulation. And if I may, 
I think this entire topic is, is summed up in one phrase, which would be a, a line from George Clooney in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Who says, mm, Perfect. A it's fine a, film. It's a fool who looks for logic in the chambers of the human heart. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll offer you a Coen Brothers uh, line back that I okay. mean that's what makes the whole darn human comedy so darn interesting, right? <laughs> there we go. That's it. So that's uh, I think that's uh, about all I got on that one. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's it too. So you know, proceed cautiously, uh, eyes wide open, and um, good luck. You, you know, and I guess you know, there's been just through CrossFit a lot of relationships founded. You know, I guess in all honesty, yeah. You could say I met my wife through CrossFit, and now we've got three kids. We're married, and so I guess you know. I guess it it, it works every now and then. So, yeah, Dude, you're the so, second success story. I'm the second success of the story. day. <laughs> See, no, that's not true. There were more, but right. so, it's a better story to say that you're, you're number fascinating, two. Fascinating, <laughs> fascinating topic. Uh, uh, and so, hey, this is what I think. This is what Adrian thinks. This is the general vibe we got from reaching out to a, a bunch of different gym owners. But we would love to know. Now, don't throw anyone under the bus. I don't want to hear any real names or locations. So be, yeah. again, as I guess as other gym owners had said, I'm going to say this. Use common sense and be adults. But we would love to hear in the comments, vaguely, um, you know, good or bad experiences. Maybe you did find the love of your life. Um, maybe you had a bad experience. That if you had a time machine, you're like, hey, it wasn't worth it. You know, a fracture, I lost a friend. And, that, and that's just terrible. Do you have a policy at your gym? Has that policy been effective? Um, you know, it'd be fascinating just to hear different policies from all around the world. And maybe some gym owners can read those and get some ideas and, and implement something for their affiliates. So that's it. For Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we will talk to you next time.